In this video, I will be talking about thiazide diuretics and why they are more likely than loop diuretics, such as furosemide, to cause hyponatremia. Before I jump into this, I want to briefly review the definition of hyponatremia as it is a very important concept, and if you don't understand it, it is very uh, confusing to understand renal pathology and uh, clinical applications. So uh, hyponatremia um, essentially is equal to the low uh, plasma concentration of sodium. Now, in terms of thinking about renal pathology, the plasma concentration of sodium is a little bit different than when we think about the concentration of other electrolytes in the serum. So the plasma concentration of sodium is equal to the ratio of sodium over total body water. Now the important fact is that it is this is a ratio. So in hyponatremia, we have low plasma sodium, which means that we have increased total body water relative to sodium as a dilute plasma sodium concentration. In other words, in hyponatremia, we have too much water relative to sodium in the plasma. So all this water is essentially diluting the sodium and making it appear as if there's low plasma sodium concentration. Again, the key thing is that this um, is based on the ratio. So again, this means that in hyponatremia, we are not talking about that there is a decreased amount of sodium molecules in the body. As long as there's more water relative to sodium, then we are in a hyponatremic state. Okay, now to briefly review the anatomy of the kidney. Here we have the cortex, we have the medulla. Remember, there are two types of uh, nephrons in the kidney. One is the cortical nephron, which kind of hangs around in the cortex. And the second one, or the most important one, is um, are the uh, juxtamedullary nephrons, which essentially are um, able to extend all the way into the medulla through the loop of Henle. And um, this loop of Henle is very, very important in um, conserving water through AD. H at the collecting duct and also um, therefore concentrating urine. Okay, so now we can go back to the diuretic drugs. So remember diuretics, basically um, when you're on them you lose water and sodium. Okay, diuretics essentially work um, by inhibiting sodium transporters. Okay, so and when you're inhibiting sodium transporters, you basically are increasing the amount of sodium that's leaving the body and when sodium leaves the body, the water will follow. Okay, so the, to these two types of diuretics are very important and it's um, to keep in mind about where they act in terms of um, uh, where in this system that they act. So thiazide, for instance, acts like the distal tubule by blocking this sodium chloride symporter, whereas loop diuretics block at the action of the loop, um, such as the this sodium transporter here at the thick segment of the ascending loop of Henle. Okay? And again, to remind you where ADH acts, it acts at the collecting duct and ultimately um, causes increased reabsorption of water. Now, the very important thing about the kidney is that there is an osmotic gradient in the medullary, okay, in the medulla, right here. So, and this is very important because this allows for ADH to sort of do its action and allow for the reabsorption of water as seen here. So the action of water retention slash conservation through ADH at the collecting duct depends on the osmotic gradient of the uh, medullary interstitium. Okay, so that is what I just said. Now keep that in mind and we'll read the next point. The osmotic gradient and the medullary interstitium is established by this sodium transporter at the thick ascending loop of Henle and urea. Um, we're not going to worry about urea in this case, but, but again, the main point is that this osmotic gradient here is established by this sodium transporter here at the thick ascending loop of Henle. And furosemide or loop diuretics is a drug that inhibits the sodium transporter located here at the thick ascending loop. Okay? So keep that in mind because th that will essentially explain why thiazide diuretics are more likely to cause hyponitremic uh, state than loop diuretics. Okay, so again, here is the previous slide showing you where exactly these diuretics act um, at the level of the kidney. And the whole point is that, remember, this transporter, this sodium transport at the thick ascending limb of Henle is responsible for creating that osmotic gradient here that is necessary for ADH to function. Because when you have this osmotic gradient, um, you now are allowing this water to be able to increase this area of high osmolality. Okay, and again, ADH allows for that because it essentially um, allows for the insertion of aquaporin channels into the lumen of uh, the cell and allow for the movement of water. Okay, 
So notice that thiazide, because it acts at the distal tubule and not at the thick ascending loop of Henle, it does not affect this osmotic gradient of the medullary interstitium. So what does this mean? Well, it means that when you're given loop diuretics, because it inhibits the sodium transport, it therefore impairs the um, osmotic gradient of the medulla, which impairs the mechanism of ADH action to reabsorb water, to conserve water, and to concentrate urine. However, thiazide does not do that because it does not, uh, its action does not inhibit this sodium transport at the thick ascending loop, but inhibits the transporter at this distal tubule. So this means that when you're on thiazide, you still have the ability to um, create that osmotic gradient in the medulla because you still have a functional sodium transporter here at the thick ascending um, limb of Henle, which again is the transporter that is responsible for establishing that osmotic gradient of the medulla to allow for ADH uh, to, to do its function. Okay, so the, the two summarized points are here. So number one, loop diuretics basically destroy the ability to conserve water through ADH. This leads to decreased water reabsorption at the collecting tubule, which means you get a loss of water. Okay, point number two, thiazide does not destroy ability to conserve water via ADH, which leads to increased water reabsorption at the collecting tubule, which then leads to water retention and now remember when you have water retention, you're, you're going to have more water than sodium, right? So this is diluting the plasma sodium concentration and therefore you get hyponitremia with thiazide but not in loop diuretics, okay? Because in loop diuretics, you essentially broke the ADH system and you can't conserve water, you can't hold on to the water and you're losing the water, okay? When you're losing the water, you're not able to dilute the sodium concentration of plasma so you're less likely to get hyponitremia. Okay, this does not mean that it's impossible to get hyponitremia um, being on loop diuretics. It just makes it less like it because than thiazide because in thiazide, again, you, you're, this ADH system is conserved because the mechanism of the inhibition of the sodium channel is not at this important area that allows for ADH function, but here at the distal um, tubule instead. Okay, so thiazide, because you're still able to conserve water through ADH, um, when you're losing a lot of sodium through thiazide, you're still able to retain all that water. So now you think about it, you're losing water, but you're retaining, excuse me, you're losing sodium and you're retaining all that water. Therefore, you're diluting um, the, the plasma concentration of sodium and therefore you have hyponitremia.